and it runs pretty quiet. So as long as it runs this induction top, I know it's gonna run the microwave. Boat life. So, so we have to tie up over here on the side. What happened, babe? I don't know. I think the bilge pump stopped working. Let's see how um, this is obviously pretty loud because I'm sitting literally right next to it. Now let's see how much uh, it quiets down once I turn it off. It's actually quiet enough that I can actually have a conversation right here next to it and I don't really have to worry about it. Um, I don't have to raise my voice or anything. And it runs pretty quiet. So as long as it runs this induction top, I know it's going to run the microwave. And really that's the only two things that I'm really worried about because those are the biggest um, amp drawers on the um, boat. So with this little puppy right here, anything short of an air conditioner we should be fine. And I haven't tested it with the air conditioner, but I'll be able to tell real quick that it's got an overload on it. So it'll actually warn me when it's um, going to be overloading. Until then, let's uh, get ready to take this to the boat for our first weekend anchoring out and let's see how that goes. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very nervous. <laughs> but I think with our new Mantis anchor and our new windlass and our solar and this puppy right here and Madeline that can cook anything, we'll be fine. Plus we're only going out to, um, we're only going out uh, locally. Well, not locally, but we're going out a little ways, but we'll be within range of a store if we forget anything or if we need fuel or anything like that, we'll be able to go ahead and take care of it right there. And uh, also we're going to be around some friends. So, yeah, we'll be all right. One way or the other, we'll be good to go. So, all right, let's do this. I'm glad this works. Boat life. So, so we have to tie up over here on the side. So we can wait on all the power boaters that are fueling up. So, can't say much about it. But it would be nice if uh, they could just, uh, you know, kind of go and we can kind of go. Yeah. <laughs> There's a line of them to get pulled out in the high and dry over here. So we document everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, whatever, the freakouts, the mistakes, everything. So I'm gonna let Madeline tell you what we learned today. What happened? I hate power boaters because they're all heading back in. So they're making really big weights, kind of like that guy away from us. Yeah, this guy came really close to us and the end of Hank 
picked up the way and um, I don't know, I felt not in control. It made us heal way more than what I'm comfortable healing. But it was the first thing we did. We, took oh, we Yeah, we take the power out from the sails. So we ease the sails as fast as possible um, in a safe way to do that. But while it's happening and you have weights coming in, channel there was no reason for it but we adjusted really well and now we took us a couple seconds we were able to kind of like recover balance ourselves out we got some we got some really good tips from that last time we got our ass kicked when it was really really bad weather and we got caught off guard we knew what to do we let the lines go well, we didn't let them go all the way. We didn't throw them all the way out, but we let we ease them a lot. So it made a huge difference in the comfort of the ride. The boat, you know, became upright, and then we were able to just kind of turn on the engine and power through all the weights. And then once we did that, we were able to kind of put this, trim the sails back up the way we wanted to, and we were back on our way. We're nice and calm again. Now it's a pretty easy. Now it's a pretty easy ride again. We're just trying to beat that before it hits that. <laughs> so that we don't go into the anchorage in the dark. There's a couple extra ditch out spots. We're passing one that's right over there. Probably can't see it on the camera. But it's right over there. That's Egmont Key. And then we can, um, so we're passing that pretty confident we're still gonna get there before dark. And we also have some friends that are already anchored there. So, worst case scenario, they will come out and they will help us. And I know where they are. They, they place themselves good enough that we can kind of just, you know, slide in there. They're waiting and stuff. So, just chill. And if it's going to be too dark, then we're going to get off before. And then tomorrow morning, we'll wake up and we'll meet them tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Look at that. The good, the bad, and the ugly, right? What happened, babe? I don't know. I think the bilge pump stopped working. Jeez. A lot of water in there. So yeah. I'm just manual, using the manual pump. Um, just watch for that move. Yep. It's just dirty water. Yeah. Going no. right through here through a really narrow channel, so it was a bad piece, it was bad timing. So, this is what we're hating triple to deal L2, with. This is what we're hating to deal with because if you see over here, we have an idle speed, but for some reason, even in this very narrow channel, very shallow channel, and if you look. That's about how wide the markers are. So, triple L2, triple yep. L2, the Coast Guard on channel 16 over. <clears throat> so, Madeline's down here keeping an eye on the bilge, making sure that it doesn't, um, make sure we don't take on any more water. Hey, 
What are you doing? Scoping out where we're going to be anchoring out for the night. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful sunset. Yes. Yep. And aside from the whole bilge fiasco, that bridge looks like it's a mile away, but it's only about probably 400, 500 meters ahead of us. But yeah, so we're just waiting for that bridge. We got another five minutes for the bridge opens. And then we're going to head right over there, point toward Matic, point to where we're going. Right there. Right there. Yep, we're going to anchor right on the other side of the bridge. Slow speed, idle speed, yep, uh-huh, yep, minimum wake, yep, mm-hmm, yep, yep. Tell me how much you love power boaters. <laughs> you just laughed. Oh, man. Uh, all right, so let's get going towards this bridge, and then we're going to anchor. So we have no idea why, but now the bilge pump is working. Is it slurping? It. Is it slurping? All right, turn, no. turn it, turn it off if it's slurping. That means it's sucking air. It may have gotten air in the line. Story of our life, air in the line. In perfect timing for us to go right through the bridge, and then anchor, and then uh, take Hank out, go walk Oliver. made it to our anchorage had to move around a little bit before we found us a good spot because yep. a lot of other boats around us I got you. so yep but we found it perfect time for a beautiful sunset i'm gonna go hop and hank and natalie's gonna go get a stiff one yeah i mean a stiff drink a stiff drink yeah <laughs> Completely exhausted from the day. <sighs> Can't say I blame her. I am exhausted. But after the bilge pump incident earlier, which we think is just was just a PVC drain, got stuck on the um, rocker switch, the float switch, and it wouldn't. Um, actually go up high enough to trigger it to go off because it was working fine after a while I'm gonna um, double check and I'm gonna set an alarm so every four hours I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna check it and if it's not I'll pump it out and then probably set an alarm for every two hours so I can make sure that um, we don't have to worry about water coming in it luckily our bilge pump is the same pump as the water pump and the shower sump so stop go to bed <laughs> so it's the same as the shower pump so worst case scenario i can replace the pump and i'll be good to go but i'm gonna try to go get me four hours worth of sleep if i 